Okay, we're going to be heading over to the mill here. And the first thing I got to do is clamp this in the vise. I don't have a big uh, V block. We are going to have to make a special tool for this though. Um, we're going to end up making a special tool to do these undercuts. But we'll worry about that when we get there. Um, so I'm just going to, it doesn't need to be clamped tight anyway, real tight. <laughs> tight enough though, I learned my lesson the other day. Well the reason I don't tighten it up real tight, I can show you. Um, get an indicator in there, but I can show you that this back jaw, if you tighten it up real tight, will start to flex. You know, it starts to, it actually starts to give in here in the casting and it, it moves around. Uh, now they, now the NC vices, they're, uh, that's a different story. They're, they're made a little different. And uh, those things can, you can <laughs> clamp the crap out of them and they don't, they don't move. But I don't have the money for one of those. I think they're around 1200 bucks or something like that. Oh, no, 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 they're more than that even, I think, the NC vices. Anyway, I can't afford it. Not for what I'm doing. Um, I can't justify it, Let's, I, should, I should say. I could buy one, but I just <laughs> can't justify doing that. All right, so let's get this dialed in. So we can put that whole pattern in. And those are uh, 632. That's a bolt it to the other, to the engine housing, the crank housing, crank case. So let's see what we're at here. And then far away from there, about that far away from there, about that. All right, let's put the indicator on and see where we're at. This black dial, the best test is, I think the fourth, third or fourth indicator that I bought while working. And it's actually my go-to indicator, the best test. I bought a tense indicator, I got rid of it. <laughs> I do not like it at all. Um, reason is that it, 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 I couldn't justify having it, even though I was on a jig bore, I just didn't need it. <laughs> Did not need it. All right, zero over there. All right, and let's put the dial on zero, zero. And four, so put it on two. Zero it. I have an indicator in my toolbox that I probably use three times and I hate it. And I should just actually sell it and get rid of it. And that's a gem. It's called a gem. Um, it's, it's a real gem. <laughs> it's a double faced indicator, dual face. I bought it because on the machine that I was running at the time was a, called a Hydrotill, three spindle Hydrotill. It is a big machine. And uh, I didn't want to have to go behind and look at the indicator behind them on the back side because the dial was over on the console and there, there was no such thing as a pendant at that time. This was a tape machine, red to tape, um, tells you how old it was. I was back in the 70s and uh, it was a big machine. Uh, we did, uh, um, I don't know if you know, Bruten 
Uh, we did a lot of Brew 10 uh, side plates and weapons weapons rail ribs, the ribs that go inside the weapons weapons rails. And we did some, uh, actually did some stuff for the cruise missile. Okay, we'll zero everything out. I'll show you that gem. I'll show you the gem. She's a gem. And I use, like I say, I used it, I think I used it three times. Let's back up here so I can show you. Comes in a box and it's got all its attachments in there. And here's the indicator. It's, and it's a gem. And then you flip the little lever and, and uh, needles set on a, what do you call it, not corrugated, but got grooves in it that it sits in. So, and I think I used this indicator probably three times in its life. It's not an indicator that I like. I should try to sell it and get rid of it. Center row. The center row. If you break the tip off of it, don't don't fret, don't huss, and don't get mad and, and fret because it's easy to get the those tips out. What you do is you take that exact same center drill that you broke the tip off, and you grind half of it away, just like that. And you go back in that hole, same hole, and that little bit that you leave on there on that. The little bit that you leave on there, I don't know if you can see it, it'll tree pan it right out. So that's what happened here. I, bro I broke the tip, ground half of it away, you know, half or a little, even just slightly more than half of it, and then went back in the same hole and tree panned it out. I learned that many years ago. <laughs> it broke center drill. Center drills, it's it's no big deal. To me it's it's so what? No big no big deal. I Okay, I got all I have all the holes drilled, camera shut off. And the next thing on the agenda is to go in here and mill the slots. There's a slot here and a slot here that that uh, by each hole that goes in there. It's 125 thou wide. I have a cutter over here. I have a cutter over here that I'm going to go in there with and we'll have to measure what kind of slot it gives me because it's 130 so we might have to make these parts over that oversize a little bit that go in there if it's if they're too sloppy um, but I think it'll be fine so I may end up taking a piece <laughs> Taking a piece of material and doing a, a, a slot in it just to see make what it cuts, what size it'll cut. Um, wish I had one of those back um, deburr tools now for deburring these. Um, I don't have so. The only way I can really deburr them is with a burr knife. Or a scale. Kind of gets the burrs off of them. But we have to make a holding fixture now for this. And what I want to do is make a holding fixture 
that uh, will load on the diameter and have a pin that's, that sticks in it so that it clocks it correctly. Um, how else could I do it? Let me think about this. I could also go like this, open it up, without making a fixture. Um, I'd have to have I'd have to have that sticking out a ways. I'm just thinking about how I'm going to do this. Okay, so if I lay a parallel in there, like that, and brought this over, I could load that pin in there and clock it up against a one, two, three block. I don't know, I think I like the idea of making a little shop aid uh, um, for it little fixture to hold that and I think that's probably what I'm going to do let's put this drill back where it belongs all right so if I make a little fixture for that then I'd probably go to make the fixture I'm thinking. <laughs> see, I'll get a piece of scratch paper and kind of show you what I'm talking about. Get a, uh, sometimes I'm not very good at drawing, though. So, <laughs> all right. So what I was planning on doing was here's the part and uh, what I was planning on doing was taking a block like that and cutting a radius in there cutting the radius in there to match the part and then sticking a pin out like that so that when you put the part on there it loads on the pin and loads on the radius and then you just clamp it up you know, it would be in the vise like that. Does that make sense to you? Uh, kind of makes sense to me. Be just a little shop aid for drilling or for doing those slots. Um, I think that's what I'm going to do. Wouldn't take much to make that little shop aid. Yeah, I'm going to do that. <laughs> What's going to be the hardest is finding a block. <laughs> or rounding up a material for it. I'll take this off. Take that out of there. Put this away. Um, I'm going to cut away here then. And go round up material for that. For making that. 
and then I'll come back when I start making it so I can kind of show you what I'm how I'm going to make it getting this radius on there that's a piece of cake and well the whole thing is a piece of cake really it's uh, pretty easy because I'll just take and clamp it in the vise like that pick up the edge of the block set and take my boring bar or pick up the edge of the block move over the diameter the radius of this so I pick up the edge move over the radius of this part and then I take a boring bar and just get it to touch on the block and then I move in and take cuts until I get to where I I'll show you it's easier for me to show you than to try to explain it so I'll be back okay I got some material here and put it in there like that I need to put the block back here so get my adjustable parallels my adjustable parallels here and it's going to take a couple of them get them out of the case Take the two biggest ones. Kind of a pain in the butt doing this, but But I feel safer this way. I already had my thrill for the week when I had the other little mishap. Okay. And I can see right now. Come up and just touch that block and then tighten these up and tighten it up and then tighten it up on the block. All right, we'll just lay that down there for now. I'm going to tap that down so that it's against the against the parallels. Okay, snug it up tight. All right. First thing I want to do is I want to pick up center, and then I want to pick up the edge. So get half inch collars in there. Get my edge finder here. And we'll go over here and we'll use the half function. That works out good. We'll just go over here. Go over here and touch. Right there. Zero. Come over here. And a little touch. And then go um half. 
x half. Ah, oh, I did it wrong. Y half. Ah, I, I did x and should have been y. All right, let's do it again. To zero there. All right, and then we'll get it to the center. We're close to it. Doesn't have to be exactly on center, but I wanted it pretty close. And we'll lock our Y. Lock that down good. Move over. Come down and pick up that edge. Right there. Zero X. Move it a hundred for the and right there zero it again. We're okay, so now we're sitting at center and we're sitting in the uh, edge of the, or the center of the spindle is on the edge of the block that we're going to use. So now, what you do is take the diameter that we're going to be loading against that, which is 3 inches 725. Actually, 3 inches 720. All right, so what we do, take three inches, 720. Let me find my pen now again. Dag damn it. Oh, playing here right in front of me. So it's three inches, 720. And we divide that in half. One inch, 860. That's half of, that's the center line, that's radius. So we move over, one inch, 860. Right there. Wow, I don't know if my boring head will go big enough for this. Um, I might have to use a different boring head. Hmm. Well, it was a good idea at the time. <laughs> I have some boring bars that are um, for bigger diameters. If I had a boring head that was big enough, what, what we do is we bring it down and we adjust the boring head until it just touches that. And then we move into the part and bore until we get the right radius that we want. But I don't think I'm gonna get there with this. But I might have a boring bar that that might work. Put, let's put this in there and see. I have a big boring head that I need to put a shaft on that I picked up out of the trash can too. It doesn't have a shaft on it. Um, the person that threw in the trash can, they, they were born and then they bent the shaft and, uh, and then they threw it away. 
because <laughs> they figured, well, it was shot. Well, I grabbed it out of the trash can, cut that shaft off. I'm going to put a new shaft on it, but <laughs> just never got around to it. Someday, <laughs> someday I'll have to do it. Maybe today is the day. <laughs> I thought I had some boring bars that were... I'm digging through my toolbox right now. You can probably tell. Hmm. I could quick make one up, I guess quick make one up that would work. Um, just a minute here. Dig through my junk drawer. I'm going to dig through my junk drawer here now. And which drawer? This I could use this and and get a tool bit in there long enough. I might do that. If you had a boring head <laughs> big enough for that, it'd be a piece of cake. I wasn't thinking about, you know, having a right size boring head. <laughs> But this will work too. If I can get a tool bit in there. I'd be able to, I don't know, that tool bit would have to be sticking way out. Let's see. Let me see. And uh, 5 sixteenths looks like tool bit. Living dangerously. <laughs> Oop. Oh, here we go. And let's see, which way do I want to spin? I don't really want to spin against the set screw. I want to spin against the... Wrong, wrong size. Yeah, I'm still working at that here. Okay, I got the tool bit, so it j just touches. Boy, that looks scary. I don't know if you can see it from the... Let's move you over here so you can see the, the scariness of it. Looks pretty scary. <laughs> and make sure I got this tight. I don't want to eat that tool bit. All right, get my calipers out of the way. All right, here we go. <laughs> Am I going? Yep. I think I'm going to slow that down, though. <laughs> Yeah, slow that down at least one notch, if not two. Just. 
That should work. How much do I dare take at a time? Twenty. I'm gonna take twenty thou. Let's kick in the boring. It's a little spooky, <laughs> but it'll work, I think. We don't we don't have to get too much of it. We just need to get enough to to locate the part. Twenty seem to work pretty good. Let's go thirty. There's thirty. I could I guess I could have cut a V block a V block but then the pin would have been too long. I'd had to have the pin out there. I I could have opened up two chamfers, I guess. There's all kinds of different ways I could do the same thing. It handled 30 pretty good. Let's try 40. This kind of reminds me of a, a, a lead person that I used to work under. Crank it up until it breaks and then back it off one and put a new cutter in. <laughs> That was his philosophy. Another way of doing that would have been loading up against the one, two, three block like I was doing and building another block, I guess, to uh, put the pin in. 40 was, sounds good. We'll leave it at 40. We're taking 40 thou cut every time I'm cranking into it. We probably already got enough right now. Um, to do what I want to do here. My uh, drawings and stuff are supposed to be delivered today for the Hodgson's 9, the 9 cylinder. And I can see that uh, 
the engine case a lot more complicated than this one. I think I'll do one more pass and then we'll call it good. I'll do one more pass here and then I'm going to call it good. And we are going 40s. I'm bringing it down by hand until I feel it or see a touch and then. and then locking in the feed, the quill feed. Okay, now that should just fit in there. Perfect. I actually should have went to this diameter because then it would have been, I could have set it down. I can set that up on parallels, I guess. But that'll work just fine. And it mates in there pretty good. All right, we're going to call that good. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my automatic center punch, mark this so I know what's what's what. This is the top and the back. That way I know that that's the back side. Because now we're going to flip it up and we're going to poke, we're going to poke the hole in there. Poke it right in about the center. Take this tool bit out of here. It's a dandy little, a dandy little rescue again. This is some junk that I rescued out of a out of a trash bin, and I made use of it. Somebody went to the work of making that, and then I don't know if they decided they didn't want it or what, but they threw it away and I latched onto it. Put that back in my junk drawer. Okay, so now we can take these parallels out. We're still on center line. We'll just flip that up. And we'll drill and ream for press fit for a eighth inch dowel.
and we want to make sure we don't go up too high to where we can't reach it. So I'll just measure from there up with the calipers real quick. Maybe. <laughs> right here we just want to I just want to get a rough estimate here so about 400 so if we go like three fifty we just gonna put a scratch mark there and that's where I want the center line of that pin to be approximately this is just a shop aid so <laughs> okay drill chuck half inch call it A center drill. Actually, I'm going to take a spot drill. Oh, yeah. So I can get a crap. I gotta, I gotta lower my knee again. I hate doing that when. The, When I'm in the middle of something. All right, I can see the scratch mark. And it doesn't have to be exact. I just want to make sure I got the full diameter so that I can. And. One twenty drill again. Little Molly D. I don't know what material this is. This is a piece of junk that was in my junk drawer over there, material drawer. I keep, save all the little pieces. through. I don't want to leave a blind hole for a dowel for a pin to stick in. Well, you can never knock it out then. Anyway it makes it hard to get out. You can get it out but <laughs> it ain't easy. Now I should have left that drill out darn it. I think it was this one. Well, let's make it make sure
Yep, that's the one. That be the one. LED. And we don't have to go all the way through with the reamer though. All right, now I can put them away. <laughs> 